وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As always we begin with the praise of Allah Azza wa Jal We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to exalt the mention and grant peace to our messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his family and his companions Welcome to another episode from the Muslim family This short course brought to you by al Madrasatul Umariya We're still talking about our children and we're talking about our children as a test and a responsibility. And the next ayah that I want to speak to you about is an ayah in Surah Al-Taghabun, ayah number 14. Allah Azza wa Jal said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwan lakum fahdharuhum وَإِن تَعْفُوا وَتَصْفَحُوا وَتَغْفِرُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Surah Al-Taghabun, ayah number 14. Allah Azza wa Jal said, O oh, you who believe, and remember, we've established this principle in many different lectures, that whenever you hear the words, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا This is something which is very important. It is something being addressed to you as a Muslim, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you a command, a prohibition, or something which is a vital piece of information for you, and that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you. Ya ayyuhal ladhina aman, O you who believe, inna min azwajikum wa awladikum aduwan lakum. Indeed, among your wives and your children are enemies to you. Fahdharuhum. So be careful of them. Now here, we've spoken about our children as a gift. We've spoken about our children as a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've spoken about the ni'mah, the blessing of having children. So how could it be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes among our children and our wives enemies? And he uses the word adu, an enemy. How could that be? I want you to have a think about that because maybe the first answer that comes to your mind initially might not be the only way of looking at the ayah or might not be the only uh, answer that is that that is put forward by the, the people of knowledge and the scholars of Islam. So have a think about it. We've talked about our children, a ni'mah, a blessing, a gift, a test also, a responsibility, uh, a sunnah from the sunnah of the, of the prophets, alayhim salatu wassalam. So how could Allah describe them as, or how could it be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as adu, as an enemy to you? Even though, no doubt, Allah said, inna min azwajikum, among your wives and among your children, there are enemies to you. Have a think about that one. Pause the video, have a discuss, or have a discussion with those who are around you, who might be watching with you, inshallah, and see if you can come up with the answer. So inshallah ta'ala, you had a chance to think about that, pause the video, have a think. Here, it's not so much that it's talking about a child who is really, uh, really bad, or uh, someone who is plotting against you or seeking to harm you. We're not necessarily talking about the situation that happened with Yusuf and his brothers, alayhi salam, uh, and what happened with them seeking to harm him like they were enemies to him. Rather, this ayah is more general than that. And to understand this ayah, we have to ask ourselves, what is an enemy? In reality, what's an enemy? And an Imam al-Sa'di, rahimahullah ta'ala, and among others among the scholars of Islam, they mentioned that the enemy is the one you read. He wants for you a sharr. He wants something bad. He desires something for you, which is bad. He desires something or wants something for you, which is bad. And reality, the reality of the situation is 
that there are many times when our wives and our children want things and those things in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal are not good for us. So really this ayah is not talking about them as plotting against you and hating you and seeking to bring about your ruin and your destruction as much as it's talking about the fact that if you were to take on board every suggestion that was given to you by your wives and your children and you were to follow every wish that they had among those wishes and those desires would be things that are bad for you and so they become like the enemy like in the position of the enemy in the sense that they're actually telling you and encouraging you and directing you towards something which is not good for you of course the enemy is plotting and planning and doing it deliberately but here it might even be inadvertent it might even be something that isn't conscious and deliberate but when you look at the situation in its true in the true reality of it what you see is you see that what they're actually asking you to do and what they're actually calling you to do and inviting you to do and directing you towards is something which is bad for you and something which is shar, it's bad and it's evil and it's going to bring uh, something negative upon you. And I brought this particularly uh, for a couple of reasons, this ayah. First of all, it gives us that different aspect, but also it's part of the test and the trial of our children. Part of the test and the child trial of our children is that sometimes we will be tested by our children pressuring or our children seeking something which is not good for them and it's not good for you and one of the tests and the trials is to take that responsibility to be able to resist that pressure when it comes at times and to direct it in the right way and to respond in the right way and here what shows you in the ayah that the word enemy here is not necessarily the enemy that seeks your destruction is the statement of Allah wa in ta'fu wa tasfahu wa taghfir if you pardon if you pardon wa tasfahu and you let things go wa taghfiru and you forgive you pardon and you overlook you treat them well and you forgive then Allah is ghafur rahim and this is a great reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the people who behave in this way. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't speak about them in the second part of the ayah like the adu who is the one who is plotting against you and seeking your destruction. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about that kind of enemy elsewhere, uh, elsewhere in the Quran. So for example, if we look at the statement of Allah Azza فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اَعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ In Surah Al-Baqarah That whoever transgresses against you, your enemy, then respond back to them. Transgress against them the same way that they did to you. So here this is completely different. So for example, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Azza wa Jal said فَمَنْ اِعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اَعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ Whoever transgresses against you, then transgress back against them in the same way that they transgressed against you. So this is talking about the, the enemy that is a typical enemy. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about something very subtle. Because the response, what is it? To forgive, to pardon, to overlook, to let it go, to uh, have mercy upon them. So subhanAllah, here is definitely a different kind of enmity. It's a kind of inadvertent enmity. And it tells us a lot about the responsibility of a parent towards their children. That we can't be, as parents, just allowing everything that our children want. Because ultimately there are going to be some things among those things that our children want that are bad for us and bad for them. And sometimes our children might put that kind of pressure. And really this is a, in a way it's kind of a, a natural thing that, maybe not necessarily from the good natural things, but how children learn to sort of manipulate their parents and how they learn to sort of try and push their parents to get what they want. And in this situation, they could be in the position of the enemy, in the sense that what they're actually asking you for and what they're actually calling for and what they're actually trying to get from you is a shar, is something which is bad. And so part of your responsibility is to resist that. But you don't resist it the way that you resist the enemy that comes to you with a sword. Instead, you resist it with al-afu, by pardoning, with as-safah, 
by letting things go and by having better manners with them the, than the way that they might have with you and by forgiveness and by forgiving and overlooking. And if you do that and you manage this situation of the fact that there can be these things that crop up between us and our children, between us and our spouses, then the reward is the forgiveness and the mercy of Allah. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Allah Azza wa Jal is ghafoor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is off forgiving, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. So here, what we take from this ayah is that part of the test and the trial that we have and part of the responsibility that we have to have with regard to our children is that we have to put Allah Azza wa Jal and put Islam first and we have to make sure that we filter our relationship with them and the requests that they make and the things that they want, we filter that through the lens of Al-Islam and what Islam says is good and what Islam tells us is not good for us and that we take that responsibility to uh, shepherd our children through uh, these kind of requests and the kind of things that they might want to do and we guide them towards what is good by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. And whenever there are difficulties between us or we struggle in that, then our principle is to pardon, to overlook, to forgive. But we stand our ground in terms of what Islam told us and in terms of what Islam taught us. And the reward for that is the forgiveness of Allah and the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal told us in Surah Al-Munafiqoon, ayah number 9, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُلْهِكُمْ أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَلَا أَوْلَادُكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ All you who believe, do not allow your wealth and your children to distract you from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does that, then they will be the losers. Now to really understand this, uh, and, and this is part of understanding our children as a test and a trial, and a responsibility is really you need to understand what the word tulhikum, what it means really. Because the scholars they mention this uh, ilha, it is inshigal al qalb, is for the heart to become distracted. It's for the heart, and, and that generally speaking, the word uh, al from which this word comes, it refers to a distraction of the heart. Don't allow your hearts to become distracted by your wealth, by your children, and allow those things to remove or to distract you or take you away from the remembrance of Allah. And whoever does this, then they are the losers. This shows us that our children, we love our children a great deal, and our children have a very special place in our heart. But it's very important that we don't allow that to cause us to compromise as it relates to our religion and as it relates to the remembrance of Allah and the obligations that Allah has established upon us and we don't allow ourselves to become distracted by that. And as we mentioned uh, before, how many people actually compromise on their religion because of their children or because of a spouse and they allow themselves to become busy and preoccupied uh, by those things instead of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the beautiful thing in Islam, because we've told and we've mentioned that uh, the about that children are a sunnah from the sunnah of the Anbiya, that it's perfectly possible to have, to be a great parent, to have a great relationship with your children, uh, to get near to Allah Azza wa Jal, and for your children to be a reason to help you to get near to Allah. That's perfectly possible. Because the Prophet ﷺ gave us that example of how to do that. But there's also a danger here. And this is just like these two ayat we've mentioned. The ayah in Surah At-Taghabun and the ayah in Surah Al-Munafiqoon. Both of them tell us the danger. The danger that can be there in our children if we don't take this test and responsibility seriously. That one, they could be in the position of an enemy to us. They could be in a situation where actually what they're actually calling us to and pushing us towards is something which is which is bad for us. And likewise, they could be a reason for our hearts to become preoccupied away from the remembrance of Allah, Azza wa Jal. And likewise, the wealth that is mentioned in the ayah, how many people leave the remembrance of Allah from the salah 
or from any of the other obligations that Allah has established and they leave it because of their work. I'm working, I can't pray. Or I'm busy, I can't pray. Or my business is, you know, is calling me and I can't pray. The same thing that happens in that wealth is the same thing that can happen with your children that you compromise in some way that takes you away from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. And if you do this, then you've truly lost. So we want our children instead to be a means to help us in the remembrance of Allah. And we had alluded to this in the ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal said, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ Al ayah in which Allah Azza wa Jal said in Surah At-Tur, those who believe and their offspring follow them in Iman, we cause their offspring to be, you know, to, to join them, to join them in paradise. And subhanAllah, that's an, a beautiful example of how the children could be a reason to help you to remember Allah and a reason to uh, help you to be among the people of Jannah. And that's part of a test, right? There are great rewards in doing it right, and there are also great dangers in doing it wrong. So this ayah tells us about not allowing your heart to become preoccupied. And I think that's really profound because it's not talking necessarily about your body becoming preoccupied. And, and that's, that's the word here is very specific because it's true, you could become physically preoccupied. Like we say, the person who's working and running around doing a job and says, oh, you know, I can't go to the masjid, physically preoccupied. But much greater danger is for your heart to become preoccupied that actually the problem is not physically you being being busy and preoccupied and, and running around, but the problem is that your heart, is, it's, pre, it's, it's making your heart busy from the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is something that we have to be very careful of if we want to pass this test as relating or as it relates to our children. And this responsibility is also alluded to in a hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, and we have mentioned this hadith already. An in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu qal ala kullukum ra'in wa kullukum mas'oolun an ra'iyyatih. Indeed, all of you are shepherds and all of you will be asked about your flock. Fal amiru alladhi ala nasi ra'in wa huwa mas'oolun an ra'iyyatih. Wal rajulu ra'in ala ahli baytihi wa huwa mas'oolun anhum. Wal mar'atu ra'iyyatun ala bayti ba'liha wa waladihi wa hiya mas'oolatun anhum. والعبد راع على مال سيده وهو مسؤول عنه ألا فكلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim that indeed all of you are shepherds and all of you will be asked about your flock and both the man and the woman here we've mentioned this hadith before probably more than once in this course already at least once we mentioned it before but here I want to focus on the fact that both of the two parents their children are included in their responsibility. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ told us that the man is a shepherd and he will be asked about, he's a shepherd over Ahli Baytihi, the people of his household, all of the people in his household, his wife, his children, and anyone else that shares his household with him, whether it might be, for example, a servant or whatever, it might be. So ultimately, a man is responsible for the people in his household. And the word responsible here, the word mas'ul, and we say in Arabic, we talk about al mas'uliya, responsibility. It means to be questioned, because that's ultimately what, it, it, what the meaning of the word uh, responsible is, that you will be held responsible. A man will be held responsible. He will be asked a question by Allah Azza wa Jal about the members of his household, including his children. And then even the wife, and you might think that because the husband is like in the position of the head of the household, that perhaps the wife is absolved of this responsibility and perhaps she won't be asked about this responsibility. Perhaps it will all be upon the husband. But the Prophet said that the woman is a shepherd and she's a shepherd over the house of her husband and his children, all of his children that are in that house, she is responsible for those children. And so that means that this responsibility is upon both of the parents. And it's a mas'uriya, meaning that the parent will be asked about it and questioned about it by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they will have to prepare an answer for that question. 
Think about how you're going to answer that mas'uliyah, that responsibility, and that Allah is going to hold you responsible for that. Now here, it's really important to note a point, which is I believe is very important, which is that you won't be asked about the ultimate result or the end result, the aqibah of what happened to your children. Because that's not in your hands. Guidance and misguidance are in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. But you will be asked about what you did for your personal responsibility. Your own responsibility that you were commanded to fulfill. As for the result of whether that responsibility ended up in that child being guided and being uh, you know, upon the straight path and being from the people of Jannah, then this is not in your hands. But what is in your hands is discharging and fulfilling that responsibility that you had to the best of your ability. And whatever happened to your child, whether they went upon the straight path or whether they deviated, you continued to discharge your responsibilities in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do. So ultimately, it's not that you'll be asked about the end result of what happened to those children, but you'll be asked about how you behaved and how you responded to the challenges and the difficulties and the tests that came along with regard to your children and whether you discharge that responsibility properly and effectively or not. Even more scary than that is a hadith which is narrated from Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad that he visited Ma'qil ibn Yasar al-Muzani radiyallahu an fi maradihi alladhi mata fi in the sickness in which he died I when Ma'qil ibn Yasar radiyallahu an he was sick in the sickness which he ultimately died from قال معقل إني محدثك حديثا معقل he said I'm going to tell you a hadith سمعته من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لو علمت أن لي حياة ما حدثتك he said I'm going to tell you of a hadith that I heard from the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم and if I knew that I was going to live longer I wouldn't have told you this hadith I he's telling this hadith because he fears that he's going to pass away and that he might not have discharged his responsibility in conveying this hadith to the people. So when he felt that his death was approaching, he said, I'm going to tell you a hadith, I heard it, Samirtuhu, I heard it from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if it wasn't that I thought that I was going to die, I wouldn't have told you this hadith. He said, Inni Samirtu Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Yaqul. I heard the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Ma min abdin yastar'ihi Allahu ra'iyya yamutu yawma yamutu wa huwa ghashun li ra'iyyatih illa harrama Allahu alayhi al-jannah. The hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. He said, There is no servant who Allah gave a responsibility to. And he dies, and the day that he dies, he betrayed, he was in a state of betraying that responsibility. He was he wasn't fulfilling that responsibility. Illa haram Allahu alayhi jannah except Allah will make Jannah haram for him. There is no person who is given a responsibility by Allah, and He's given people to look over, to be responsible for. Ra'iya, he has people under his responsibility. And on the day he dies. He is in a state of betraying them in that responsibility and he's not fulfilling that responsibility in the way that Allah commanded. Allah will make Jannah haram for him. SubhanAllah. This hadith is from the most, from among the, the hadith that put fear into your heart when it comes to the issue of responsibility towards your children. That your children ultimately, they are within your, they are within your uh, flock, you're a shepherd. You're a shepherd. Indeed, all of you are shepherds and all of you will be asked about your flock. And here, even though this hadith is often mentioned under the topic of the Amir, the uh, governor of the Muslims or the ruler of the Muslims, in reality, this hadith applies to everyone who the Prophet described them as Ra'in, a shepherd. So that includes the Amir, Alladhi ala nas the Amir that is responsible for the people. It includes the man towards his household. It includes the woman towards her husband's household and his children. And it includes the slave towards his master's property. 
because all of those the Prophet ﷺ described them as a ra as a shepherd. And here it says that any person who Allah gave that flock to, gave that responsibility to, and the day that they die, they are in a state of betraying the people that they are responsible for. Allah makes Jannah haram for them. So this is the danger of failing in this test towards our children. That how can a person take it lightly and take and not take it to be a, a big responsibility and not see it to be such a big test and a trial? That th this is the danger of failing as it relates to failing in your responsibilities towards the people that Allah has placed in, in, in has placed you in authority over them. So for example, the man as it relates to his household, as it relates to his wife, as it relates to uh, his children. And that, you know, we talked about this as it relates to marriage, you know, we said about the issue that yes, a man has rights, yes, a man has qawwama and authority, but look at the danger if he doesn't fulfill it. Haram Allahu alayhi jannah Allah makes jannah haram for him. The woman, she has responsibility over her children. Her children have to obey her. We talked about the importance of or we, we inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go into more detail later on about this, the issue of the, the relationship and the rights of the parents over the children and the right of the parents to for their children to obey them. But look at the danger if you don't fulfill that responsibility properly. Haram Allahu alayhi jannah Allah makes jannah haram for that individual. And in our next hadith, we're going to see that this is not just a danger for the parents, this responsibility, but it's also a danger for the children as well. There is a hadith narrated by Abi Hurairah أَنَّهُ كَانَ يَقُولُ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَا مِنْ مَوْلُودٍ إِلَّا يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِسَانِهِ كَمَا تُنْتَجُ الْبَهِيمَةُ بَهِيمَةً جَمْعًا هَلْ تُحِسُّونَ فِيهَا مِنْ جَدْعًا Abi Hurairah he narrated from the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, there is no child except that child is born in a natural state, in a state of the fitrah. But it's the parents that turn them into a Jew or a Christian or a Magian. Like the animal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the example of the animal from among the cattle, the behemoth. And it gives when it gives birth to an animal, and this is to understand this, you have to understand what they did in the time of Jahiliyyah, in the pre-Islamic times, they used to mark or brand or cut the ears of the cattle and this was a part of their the, the polytheistic beliefs they had and the Prophet ﷺ asked when the cattle is born is it born like that it's not born like that the cattle is born without that flaw without that um, deficiency in it and without that belief attached to it but it's the people that cut the ears of the cattle it's those people who had that those polytheistic beliefs they are the ones who cut the ears of the cattle Likewise, the child is born pure. The child is born upon a state of natural inclination to worship Allah. But look at what the parents can push the child towards. They push the child towards becoming a Jew or a Christian or any other religion. And so ultimately, it's not just the responsibility, it's not just a responsibility for the parent. It's also a responsibility towards the child and what that child is brought up upon. And no doubt everyone will have the opportunity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your Lord doesn't oppress anyone. Everyone have the opportunity to turn towards Islam and to accept the message. But subhanAllah, look at what the, the par how the parent can start their child in life or the danger that the parent can have for their child. The parent can either take their child towards Islam and give their child a great start and an opportunity to grow up in Islam or the, ch or the parent takes their child away from Islam to some other different kind of religion. So the danger is not just a responsibility that affects the parent and the parent not getting into Jannah, but it also affects the child as well. And that's all we have time for in this episode. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Wassalatu wassalam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Assalamu alaikum. If you're enjoying these videos and you'd like to keep up to date with all of the courses we're going to be running, make sure you head over to amauathome.com.